along this overgrown path is a piece of Sunderland's hidden World War I history. This rare World War I acoustic mirror was found buried under the undergrowth in Fulwell, North Sunderland, just near the old mill and the VW garage. The mirror's main job was to pick up sound waves from German zeppelins that were sent to bomb northeast ports, warning of an attack. The reflected sound from the engines was detected by a microphone placed in front of the dish. Evidence can be found on that slightly pointed plinth that sits in front of the acoustic mirror. The sound was then transmitted to a listening ear operator who would be sitting in the trench to the front of the mirror, ready to receive signals of approaching enemy aircraft. This gave a vital 15 minute warning for anti-aircraft defences to be directed on them. It's thought that the early warning system was erected quickly after the 1916 Zeppelin attack that devastated North Sunderland. The mirror is positioned facing eastwards, covering the approaches to the Tyne and Rear estuaries, and looks directly towards the North Sea. A chain of sound mirrors may have been in existence to defend the northeast coast, but their locations are unknown, although there is one similar down in Redcar. So what happened on that fateful night in Sunderland? On April the 1st 1916, German Imperial Navy Zeppelin L11 crossed the coast just below Seam Harbour and proceeded inland a few miles before dropping a few bombs at the Hetton Downs, Eppleton and Philadelphia. The bombs were targeted at industries but there was no casualties or damage of any consequences done. The Zeppelin is thought to have originally targeted Tyneside, however seeing that it was well defended, the pilot flew south to attack the weir. The Zeppelin passed along to Sunderland, reaching the town just a few minutes after 11pm. People were on guard after hearing the nearby explosions, with many being on lookout. It was a clear and starry night, with the Zeppelin being first seen on the west side of the town at an estimated height of approximately 7,000 feet. It crossed through Sunderland, dropping 14 explosive and 7 incendiary bombs within only 5 minutes. The worst hit streets were Fern Street, Northbridge Street and Victor Street. Tram number 10 was standing at the Wheat Chief when a bomb hit the tram directly causing splinters of wood and metal to shower the area. A lot of damage was done within the industrial Monkwea mouth, with 22 people being killed and 105 injured. Tram Inspector Hall was killed that night, with the conductress Sally Holmes being seriously injured. The Fulwell guns turned on the Zeppelin, but it was not hit directly. The Zeppelin didn't make any further damage and was forced to leave. Due to the sensor restrictions with the press and propaganda, details of the Sunderland Zeppelin attack were not revealed until 1918, when the war had ended. Every preparation was made from that day onwards and no attacks fortunately occurred. <laughs>